hello everyone welcome back to our channel good morning good afternoon good evening i greet you all according to your time and locations you'll be watching this video yes my dear viewers i am back again with another update so guys i have a video here i would like we all to watch but before then if you're meeting my channel for the very first time you're highly welcome please kindly do well to like share and subscribe leave your thought on the comment section and let us know what you think about this video and i will see you towards the end thank you very much for joining us good morning thank you for having me over the weekend uh, or in the past few days social media has been a buzz with um the hashtags of course as a result of your leak and the documents that you have reportedly leaked now i, I think i'll start from the back and then we get to the front uh your account has currently been suspended as a result of this um, tell us first of all why you are handling this um, why how you're handling all of this and why the investigation into the presidential candidate uh, of the all progressives congress or in this case the president elect okay so um let me let me start from the issue with my account being um, suspended it hasn't actually been suspended it's just been temporarily locked um which is what happens when a certain number of um, accounts uh uh, reports a post of yours and then Twitter automatically responds by locking your account and then gives you the the, um, the choice to either delete the content and immediately regain your account, which I can still do if I want, or to go through the appeal process if one believes one hasn't done anything wrong. In this case, I clearly haven't done anything wrong because according to Twitter's own platform policies, um, the policy on, on privacy of information doesn't apply when the subject is a public figure and when the um, post is done in the public interest, which is what this is. Now, um, what 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 has happened here is I, I, I actually got hold of this document quite a number of months ago. Um, I wasn't able to put it out at the time because um, there was a fear that it might be traceable back to the source. I was uh, I was told by the source that I should give it a, a certain period of time before putting this out there, which is why I waited until a few uh, days ago to put this out. And what this document proves beyond any conclusive um, uh, shred of, of doubt, of, of reasonable doubt, is that the president-elect has in fact committed the crime of perjury. Perjury which is lying under oath. Now, on his INEC EC9 declaration, which is essentially sworn David, stating one's intention to run for president, um, there, are several there, there are several questions that are asked on the affidavit. One of them is, um, uh, have you ever obtained uh, citizenship of another country? And on the INEC EC9 form, he ticked no. Now, um, this document proves that he has in fact obtained citizenship of at least one other country that we know of, which happens to be Guinea. Now, one can have um, several theories as to why in the first place, um, what he was doing with the, with the Guinean diplomatic passports in the first place, but that's not the issue. The issue is simply that he did not declare this on his EC9 declaration, he told a lie on his sworn declaration, which is the crime, which constitutes the crime of perjury. Um, on the same EC9 form, there, there are at least on on at least three other uh, instances on the form. There, are, there are other things which can arguably be constituted as perjury, but this is by far the most um, obvious one, which is why I think it has elicited the kind of reaction that it has. Um, my, if 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 there's something close to a well, I won't call it a regret, but um, the the ongoing uh, presidential uh, 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 election petitions, which have been lodged by the two main opposition candidates, Abubakar Tiku and uh, Peter Obi, um, for whatever reason, um, haven't um, made direct mention of this issue. Um, one one would hope that maybe they might they, they, they might be able to add this issue involved because the point is. If one is going to become president of Nigeria, then the process by which one becomes president of the country must be valid. Now, if the uh, INEC EC9 declaration with which one declared one's intention to run for president um, has fraudulent information on it, has false information on it, on this on, on sworn statement, then what that simply means is that the person who has filled in that false information under oath is not just unqualified to run for president. Under Nigerian law, perjury is a very serious offense that attracts 14 years in prison. So these are issues that the Nigerian court system must answer. 
Well, um, David, what, what do you expect, you know, would be the response? You know, I know you would definitely not speak for them, but um, I've, I've seen interviews where, for example, the former governor of Lagos State, you know, was asked, you know, similar question concerning the Guinean citizenship, you know, and he seemingly answered the answered a different question. Um, and there's also been some, some type of um, distraction between what exactly your points are, which are perjury, um, you know, some people have tried to make it a, you know, he could be disqualified from running from, you know, being president-elect or some of all of that because he has double, cit double citizenship or dual citizenship, you know, which, of course, constitution clearly states that you cannot have if you're going to be president, some of all of that. So what do you expect will be the response or the outcome of some of all of this, you know? And I'm saying that also because we've seen in the build-up to the elections, before people even went out to vote, that you had put out, you know, all the... Um, um, report, investigative um, um, work that didn't seem to deter a lot of Nigerians from whatever decision they were going to make, you know, towards the election. So, how do you think this will turn out? You know, the reaction, first of all, from the APC and from, you know, his, the president-elect's president camp and generally what this would end as? So, first of all, I don't expect that there will be a reaction or a direct reaction from the APC. Judging from what the reaction was, in fact, which was to report my my, my Twitter accounts, um, it, it, it seems to me that what, what the APC is going to do is just stick their fingers in their ears and hope that people stop talking about it and hope that it goes away. Um, bear in mind that this isn't the first time that I specifically have raised the issue of perjury. I published a story about it in, in November which was focused on this particular instance of perjury. But as I said, there were several other instances of perjury on the INEC EC9 declaration. I, I put forward evidence in that article, for example, that the Chicago State University certificate, which is submitted with its INEC EC9 declaration, was in fact a forgery. And on the INEC EC9 declaration, one of the questions asked is, have you submitted a forged certificate to INEC? It takes no. I presented very compelling evidence that what he submitted to INEC was blatantly a forgery. So um, after I, I put the story out in November, there was a very, very, very loud and pointed silence from the camp of the APC because there was simply no defense. And I don't expect this time to be any different. I don't expect them to come out and actually attempt to address this uh, directly because, again, there is simply no defense. It is very cut and dried what has happened here. Uh, what I suspect will happen is more people will continue doing what uh, the the outgoing uh, uh, Minister of Works did in his, his most recent TV appearance where he sort of obfuscated the issue and started sort of raising a related issue, which is more or less a red herring, which is the issue of whether under the constitution someone with dual nationality is allowed to run for president. The reason I call that a red herring is that there is actually, um, there is actually some, it's, it's a legal gray area. So. There is, I believe, section 38 of the Constitution which states that someone who is running for president is not allowed to have dual citizenship, uh, except they, they had that, uh, that citizenship from birth, that if you obtained citizenship, then you're not allowed to run uh, for, for president of Nigeria. However, there is case law precedent which states something different, which states that as long as you have Nigerian citizenship, the fact of having dual citizenship does not supersede your rights as someone with Nigerian citizenship to run for president. So, which is why I said it's a bit of a red herring, right? Because um, they, you can argue back and forth all day. But the real issue for me is the fact that there has been a very, very clear and obvious instance of perjury, something which is clear and obvious even to a legal lay person, that yeah. this person has lied in the oath. I mean, you, you've highlighted that really this there's going to be some back and forth as regards Section 28 sub 1 and Section 137 sub 1, and you know what the court interprets these two mean, as well as, well as uh, the cases that have been established before. Let's talk about you, David. Uh, there are some who think that this might have been a case of a personal vendetta that you might have against not just the president-elect, but against the political party of the All Progressives Congress. What are your reactions to that? Well, my reaction is the same as it always is, which is that um, have I presented... Uh, evidence or not to back up my claims? Have I said something that is true or not? Have I told the truth or have I told a lie? Um, so far in my four plus years of um, independent online investigative journalism, um, there is yet to be a single instance where someone has successfully proven that something I put forward in a story or, or something, a, a 
a story that I have broken is false in any way or has successfully taken me to court or anything like that, that is yet to happen in just over four years of practice. So I think that tells a story on its own. So um, if anyone believes that this is the product of a personal vendetta or whatever, again, I think of that as a red herring. I think of that as a distraction because the real issue is, is it true or is it not true? Have I presented evidence? I have presented evidence in this case. So the question is that uh, Guinean diplomatic passport, is that document authentic or not? That's the question the APC should be answering.